Hello, you're watching the Irish Mammy channel. If you're new here, you're welcome. And if you're returning, you're welcome back. So today I'm bringing you along on a work day. We've uh, just come back yesterday from a few days away. Um, and you can imagine all the prep that was going on before that. It takes about five days preparation to get away for five days. But the garden has been neglected for a wee while. So today you're coming along and uh, helping me clean up the garden. Uh, I have some seeds to sow, um, some beds to clear out and a little bit of harvesting to do. So I'll give you a wee overview of all I have to do. I've only about an hour and a half to get to doing some work now and I have to take it back up in the evening. The first school collection is, is in about a, an hour and a half uh, and then I'll pick it back up in the evening. So the first job of today is to clear out this bed. Uh, this was my summer lettuce. As you can see, it has bolted. This is what happens when lettuce gets older. Um, it starts to go to flower and put out seed. And once it does that, it gets very bitter and isn't really very palatable to eat. So I have the lettuce to clear out. I have these spring onions here as well that needs to clear, be cleared out. They're getting a bit big. They can still be used and will be used. They won't go to waste. Um, I have two parsley plants in here. They'll stay there. Um, I will be replanting then with some winter leaves, uh, but I'll just plant around the parsley. I may trim some of it back and um, we'll harvest it and bring it in for dehydrating. I also have two beds of carrots that have been sown for about three or four weeks. The carrots are starting to pop up or are well po popped up at this stage but as you can see there's lots of weeds popping up as well that bed and this bed on this side as well so you can see plenty of little carrot seedlings all over but lots of weeds as well so the plan for the carrots is even though i don't actually have to thin the carrots because i'm going to be weeding them and disturbing the roots of the carrots probably um i need to get a structure in place to keep away the carrot root fly uh, probably starting to dwindle off at this stage but I don't want to take the risk um, so as soon as I have done weeding I will be putting in um, like um, an arch kind of um, I'll be putting pipes over the top of the bed um, and covering them with a fine mesh uh, enviro mesh it's called I'll show you that process when I'm doing it as well um, carrot root fly causes damage to the actual carrots, the roots of the carrots, they tunnel through the carrots. Um, they're still edible, it doesn't leave them inedible, but you usually have a lot of black black pieces to pick around, so it's awkward when you're peeling them and trying to cook them. So we want to avoid it if we can. Uh, I had quite a bit of damage last year. Even though carrot root fly aren't supposed to be able to actually fly very high and um, theoretically shouldn't be able to reach these raised beds since they're two foot high. Um, I found last year I still had damage uh, that I hadn't expected and um, more than likely they were actually carried up higher on the wind um, and that was what raised them into the into the raised beds. So this year I'm not taking any chances. As soon as I have disturbed the soil at all around the carrots I'll be getting the environment over them and hopefully stopping the damage. So what actually happens is the carrots lay, the flies, the carrot flies lay eggs in the soil around the carrots. The eggs then when they hatch and turn into larvae, the larvae tunnel through the carrots and uh, cause a lot of damage to the carrots. Um, so I'll take you along with me to do that as well. Have a bed over here. This is sown with turnips in this half. Um, you can see I sow several seeds per hole. So usually I put about five, I'd like about five seeds uh, in the width of it there. So I'd sow several seeds per hole and uh, they need thinning down. Also weeds coming up in this bed. Um, that's just garden and life, I'm afraid, that you deal with weeds. So we'll uh, get rid of the weeds, thin down the, thur the turnip, the um, seeds and um, then over here I have beetroot just needs weeding I won't be thinning it out I sowed the beetroot relatively thinly and um, I find beetroot don't need to be thinned as much as people may think 
the beetroots themselves when they start to develop will naturally just grow away from each other um, and you can harvest the bigger ones and then leave the rest of them to come on. Now it is important that you harvest them correctly. I wouldn't be pulling them directly out of the ground straight up. Uh, that is more likely to disturb the roots of the other uh, beetroots around them. But if you twist them gently and then pull them out, there's less disturbance for the other uh, roots. So they're still able to grow on and develop and mature. And this bed here uh, has my onions. I think they're ready for harvest. I may get to harvest them today. We'll see if I just get enough time to get to them. But a lot of them have fallen over now. It's given high winds for the weekend as well. So they'll surely be tossed over by then. Um, could be as well to get them out today if I can. Uh, racing against the weather today as well as racing against time. So we'll see what I get to. So the first job we're going to get to today is clearing out this bed of lettuce. Uh, it won't go to waste. I have chickens. So the whole plants will, all the plants that I pull out will go to the chickens. And they can turn them into eggs for me. Right, let's go. And you can see the chickens are more than happy with their treats. Now, so I'm just giving the soil a quick little rake over. It's quite dry as well. This great spell of hot weather we're getting have it, has it dried out a bit. And of course, we weren't bothering, I wasn't bothering to water the lettuce since it was gone to seed already. So I wasn't panicking about it. So we'll just give it a light tilling over. I won't be removing any roots or anything, they're all organic matter, they'll all rot back into the soil, help feed the next crop as well. Okay, that's the bed prepped and ready. It didn't take too long, I'd say about 10 minutes done that, but I'm already roasting. <laughs> uh, right, let's see what kind of seeds we're going to put in it now. Okay, so I've moved into the greenhouse here, I have my collection of seeds here. Buying seeds is like maybe some women that buy handbags or buy shoes. Seeds is my addiction and uh, I kind of go mad when I start buying. Um, not as much choice now I find. I used to buy a lot of my seeds from Premier Seeds Direct. They're a UK company which I actually came across on Amazon first of all but then I started buying from them um, directly. Uh, of course Brexit has scuppered that but um, I still have a lot of seeds there. Um, they were would have sold but uh, bulk amounts of seeds um so i still have a lot of seeds left from them um but i mean i pick seeds up everywhere you know uh, any garden center i mean i nearly always pick up seeds um i order online from all sorts of different uh, companies i've ordered from quick crop in the past i order from fruit hill farm um ordered from irish seed savers I've ordered from Brown Envelope Seeds, um, Seedaholic is another one and um, the dog is absolutely mad here at my feet, <laughs> not good for me to play with her so if you can hear her running around in the background that's what she's at, she's uh, scurrying around after a ball and looking for me to throw it for her. Uh, but the, um, 
Seedaholic is another company. I haven't actually ordered from them yet, but um, I'm, I've been looking at them lately and I'm liking the variety of seeds they have, uh, particularly flower seeds as well. They seem to have a great collection of flower seeds. So it really doesn't matter where you order your seeds from, but you know, um, I like a bargain and that's where Premier Seeds really was uh, coming up uh, trumps because they, most of their seeds were 99 pence sterling for a packet of seeds um, and there was a good amount of seeds in it. So find it hard to match what I had with Premier Seeds but um, you know there are lots of companies in Ireland selling seeds at the minute so no shortage of seeds. Just try and control yourself when you buy them. So we'll take a look through here now and see what I have to sow. In terms of winter leaves. Okay, that took a while to actually decide what I'm gonna plant. Uh, so I'm gonna be sowing this mazuna that's uh, great for growing through the winter. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna sow one row of that. Um, this is only my first play sowing for the winter. Um, I'll be sowing more over the weekend in cell trays to bring it on. Um, because my greenhouse and polytunnel isn't cleared out from the tomatoes and peppers yet and realistically won't be until October um, I'll be sowing lettuce and stuff in trays to be planted out then as soon as I have the beds cleared so for now in the bed uh, I'm going to be direct sowing some mizuna uh, it's an oriental leaf quite peppery um, and the older and more mature it gets the more peppier, pepperier it gets so um, best to harvest young um, this is pak choy uh, when it's young it can be harvested as a uh, lettuce leaf and again as it matures and gets older it gets more tougher um, and is great in store fries then uh, that's the green variety of pak choy there um, and I will also be growing our red variety just because I like varieties of colour. Again, same thing can be harvested young and used as lettuce or left to go grow and mature and used um, in store fries. And then I'll be sowing more of this. Um, you will see how much space I actually end up with, but I'll be sowing more of this. Um, this isn't specifically uh, a winter uh, mix, but because we're only at the very beginning of September, I think today is the 2nd of September, this has plenty of time to grow on. We will be only harvesting it as a baby leaf salad mix. So really only needs a couple of weeks. Um, and don't expect it to be getting too cold just yet. Um, so this will be um, used up fairly quick uh, and I will sow in trays uh, a more winter hardy um, oriental leaves mix um, and I'll show you that when I do it uh, later on over the weekend. Right, let's get these sow. Uh, sowing seeds one of the simplest jobs in the world uh, one of my favorite I would love to do nothing more than sit in the greenhouse sowing seeds day in day out uh, direct sowing slightly different but no more difficult um, lettuce seeds like to get a little bit of light um, so we're going to put the label there I'm going to do the baby leaf mix first. Um, let me see, I'll just mark this roughly. Two, three, so that would be one row each for my um, pak choy and my mizuna. And then we'll do three rows of the baby leaves. So just uh, create a small furrow in the, in the soil. And these can grow quite close together because they're only going to be uh, harvested as small baby leaves. And then we'll just lightly cover them after we sow them. I'm going to sow them fairly quickly. Um, let's see now. Now, these are old seed, so I'm hoping they'll grow. But if not, we'll, uh, we'll stick in another type. So just sprinkle them along in the furrow. 
not rocket science. Don't worry about how many you're sewing. I always say, just plant. If you just get the seeds in the ground and let them grow. Experience will tell you how big they'll grow, how fast they'll grow, everything else. Um, and look, it, you'll make mistakes, definitely. You'll sew stuff too close together, you'll sew stuff too far apart, but you'll not know unless you actually do it. You'll never learn how close or how far apart to sew until you, um, you get the experience, because um, no video can show you, no book can tell you until you actually do it. And don't worry about it. We all make mistakes. That's how we learn. And these could be just as easily sewn on the top of a pot. Does not have to be in a raised bed with soil. Buy a bag of compost, fill a fairly shallow pot for lettuce. It doesn't need to be a deep pot. Uh, put your seeds on top, cover with a little more compost, and away you go. You have, um, you'll have your lettuce in a couple of weeks time. So no fancy raised beds needed. Now, I'm just going to run my fingers along both edges and just gather the soil in over the top of the leaves. Nothing major, no big um, layer on top of it. Some of them will be sticking out and see a bit of light, but that doesn't matter. Like I said, lettuce actually doesn't mind a bit of light. Lettuce seeds, I should say, don't mind a bit of light. It helps them grow. So, just closing it in there over the top of them. Uh, we watered these in fairly well. That will compact the soil around them. Um, the roots, when they do start to germinate, the roots need contact with soil. It's quite important. So that is, and obviously water as well. The water is what helps break the hard shell around the seed uh, that helps it germinate. Um, so we water these in really well now when we're finished sowing. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna sow is my uh, mizuna. there and I'll go ahead and put in the rows for these in the back. Pak choy and the red pak choy. Uh, in my experience the green pak choy grows a little bit bigger than the red. So I put the red in closer to the parsley because it's going to be a little bit overlooked by the parsley. and I'm going to sew these fairly thickly. Um, the more thickly that you sow these seeds, the smaller they're going to grow, which is what I want. I don't want them to grow huge because uh, they get more bitter the older they get. As with all leaves, um, they get tougher and more bitter, more peppery. So we want to harvest these young and we can keep them small and young um, by packing them in closely together. So the pak choy a little more thinly because it will grow because I want it to grow bigger for um, stir fries. And I have this little bit of space here uh, where I took out the spring onions. Just gonna run that over with the wee rake. A few weeds in it. And uh, on this side, I'm just gonna put in some Swiss chard. Uh, and again, this is for harvesting the baby leaves. Uh, but when it gets too big, you can actually harvest it for cooking. Um, you cook it on its own as a vegetable side dish or again it can be added into stir fries.
but it's lovely in salads um, as, a, as a baby leaf. Um, this particular variety is called Magenta Sunset. I thought I did have a rainbow mix um, of all different colours. I just can't seem to find it at the minute. Um, but we'll go ahead with this one for now and I can still sow more uh, up until the end of November. Uh, and it looks very like a beetroot seed. They're the same family. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and harvest some of this parsley because it's over, spilling over where I've just sown those seeds. And it'll grow back, of course. Okay, that's one bed down. Um, I'm going to head on and uh, get the onions done now. Um, starting to drip a little bit, so I want to get it done in a hurry. Um, and I think I'm going to put spinach in there after I've taken that out. I have the spring onions on one side, I'm going to leave them alone. Um, I have harvested the bigger spring onions in the first bed there, so I don't need to harvest any more today. Um, the other, these other spring onions are uh, a lot less mature, so they can stay in for another while. Um, I just saw around them. Just to show you when you're harvesting onions, not a good idea to just pull them up by the stalk. Um, you're more likely to damage the neck of the onion and leave it that it won't store very well. So the best way is to actually crank it up from the bottom, from underneath with a fork or a trowel or something of that nature. So you pull the roots loose first and then lift it up. And I just shake the soil off. Uh, so there we are, quite a big harvest of onions. Um, well, not an extraordinary harvest by any means, but the onions themselves are quite big. This year I had concentrated my onion growing out in the what I was calling the wild area. Uh, it didn't work out. That was going to be my the bulk of my um, onion harvest for the year. But uh, like I said before, you learn by your mistakes. I already have a different plan um, to get a better harvest next year from my onions. What I also forgot to mention is that these onions will have to be cured. Now the curing process is only if you need to store them. So I do hope to store these over the winter. 
So what I'll do is, and I'll bring you along and show you what I'm doing. I will lay them out on um, uh, like a wire mesh um, panel uh, to let the airflow get all around them. Uh, they will still take in energy. The bulb itself will still take in energy from the greens on the top and from the roots. Uh, so you bring them in, let them dry off uh, under cover. It doesn't have to be dark, but it does have to be dry. Um, so you let them basically let all the energy be sucked into the bulb from the green top part of the plant. Um, and then when it dies off, then you can trim them up uh, or tie them up, string them up. Um, to keep for onion sto for storage over winter. So basically what's happening is it's taking in the energy and then also it's creating the outer layers of skin are going to um, cure, become harder and uh, create a barrier around the bulb to keep the moisture inside the bulb. Uh, and I'll show you when, when I'm doing that. I have a set up in my little shed at the back of the greenhouse here and I'll show you when I'm doing that. First I'm going to get to um, sorting out the bed and re uh, So I have the soil ready now, all ready for uh, sowing the seeds into. As you can see I don't get too worried about the smaller weeds, I just um, till them into the ground, uproot the roots uh, and till them back into the ground. They'll rot down part of the, their organic matter, they'll rot down uh, and compost in the soil. Um, now it'll be different with perennial weeds and you see I you may have seen I dug down I could find a root of what was probably a dandelion so I did pull that out um, and breaking that up and distributing it in the soil it will only take root again so that has to be pulled out completely. Um, I'm going to sow spinach now in that bed. And the variety of spinach I'm sowing today is Medania. Uh, only a few seeds left in this one, so this is the second packet as well. It's um, just a normal green type spinach, um, nice and tender and stays nice and tender. kids and make the dinner and um, I'm racing against the weather now it's going to start raining this evening and pretty much going to be raining all weekend so the onions are still in the same place they were when I left them earlier on my priority now is to get them into the shed and spread out on the wire rack for curing uh, so that they can go into storage um, I'll bring you along for that now So this is just the setup I have for curing my onions and garlic. It's just a wooden frame. Uh, Gary made this for me and then he just covered it over with normal chicken wire. Um, wee bits of brace in there just to keep it all sturdy. And uh, they really only need to go on this for maybe three or four weeks um, and then I'll be able to store them. Uh, I do hope to actually be able to hang them up, uh, hang, raise this up on the uh, beams off the lean-to here because if you just keep them up out of the way.
Okay, so I have the carrots covered over now after uh, doing the weeding. It's not a perfect job, but it'll do the best. Um, I have it weighted down with little pieces of the timber there all around. And you can see there where I had a couple of wee holes. I just had them uh, closed up and pegged with pegs from the clothesline. Um, the carrot root fly is not very agile and it's a good job because that's not now completely tight around the edge. But uh, like I said earlier, he'll, um, the carrot fly will be carried on the wind, I think is the only way he'll get up into those raised beds in the first gun off. So the net will be enough to keep him out, I hope. Um, nearly finished now for the day. The sky is starting to get uh, very heavy. So um, surely definitely running out of time now at this stage. I need to get this bed over here. I'm a wee bit exhausted. I uh, can't say I have a whole pile of work done. Um, it has taken me a day to do it, but it's hardly a day's work. You can see I have put the uh, fleece cover on the second bed of carrots there behind me. Um, I will have to change that. I do want to put EnviroMesh on it, and I will need the fleece over the winter, so I'll order more EnviroMesh and um, I'll swap it out for the fleece. Um, so five beds total uh, sorted today, two of them cleared and re-sown, um, two of them weeded, covered over, and one of them the seeds thinned out, um, the seedlings thinned out for the, that was for the Swedes and I weeded it as well and I also uh, re-sowed because if you remember in one of my last videos I said that the dog had actually dug up that bed so she had scattered the beetroot seeds everywhere so I re more beetroot seeds in there and I do think there's still have plenty of time to come on um, but all in all uh, I'm happy enough with my day's work and still a lot of work to do to catch up um, I have my harvesting to do yet um, probably get that done in the morning if the rain stays away um, but I can still harvest in my greenhouse and my polytunnel um, and I also need to sow seeds, so I have indoor work to do, even if I can't get my outdoor work done. Um, I really probably get the la on the last legs of uh, sowing seeds now to keep them going over winter. I have some sown already, um, but I do need to keep more going. Um, they need to get a good start in the warmer weather, and then they'll continue to grow slowly over the winter um, to produce um, vegetables hopefully all year round and hopefully till next February and March. The carrots now, they're wrapped up now. Um, I'll not be going near them again now until probably the end of November. I'd say it'll be the end of November before I actually get to pick any carrots. Um, and like I said before, if the weather is fairly mild, they'll just stay in the ground. I try my best to not take them out to store them. Um, I don't have the room for a start. Um, and I really don't want to start messing around. You can store them in sand and all that, but I really don't want to start messing around with all that because it's, well, it's just too much hassle and you have to buy sand or whatever to put them in. So if I can leave them in the ground, um, 
that's all the better. It doesn't involve buying any more material to uh, store them or using electricity or space in the fridge to store them either. So hopefully that will work out. Um, so still a lot of jobs to do over the weekend. Uh, I hope to bring you all along with me. Um, if you're liking what you're seeing uh, on my videos, I would like you to like the video. Uh, please subscribe. And uh, if you actually hit the notification bell as well, that will let you know uh, when I put up a new video. So possibly extra videos coming up now in the next few days. Um, starting to get a bit used to this. If there's any questions you have, anything I haven't uh, addressed, and more than likely there's lots because I do forget what I'm saying half the time when I stick the video on or the camera on. So um, just put your questions down below. We'll do my best to answer them. Um, otherwise, have a great weekend.